Hello, hello! How is everyone today? <laughs> Sorry for the late start. I woke up and I was feeling absolute trash. I think I went too hard at work the last couple of days and my body is now paying for it. I am just aches and pains. So let's try and get rid of some of those aches and pains with a bit of painting. <laughs> I'm still going with this hands up painting. I actually haven't touched it since our last stream. I know I said I was going to do a few sessions and I didn't. So that means we've got lots to do. Um, yeah, I want to see how close to the figure getting finished as we can today. And I've refreshed my palette. I've started on a new palette. I've got new medium. I've got some new brushes, some not so well cleaned brushes. We'll see how we go. Um, and yeah, we'll jump in and I think we're going to start sort of around the face. Let's start by just filling in everything that isn't filled in and then that will feel like progress and then we can go from there. Yeah. Okay, let's switch over. So this is our setup today. As you can see, I've still got all these areas here that are white. They're the first bits that we need to get rid of. And then we're going to progress from the top down to the bottom. So down here, everything is dry now, which is absolutely lovely. So you can touch everything, not a problem. I'm still loving how all these sky landscapes we did last time are looking gorgeous. I love them. Um, I can even zoom out for a sec so you can see the whole thing. One sec. That's more the whole thing. Ignore my computer screen. <laughs> but you can see there, yeah, having the cloud come around here and then a skin break definitely was more effective than the cloud coming the whole way down. Um, if anything, I want the cloud to sort of come up a little bit, but I don't want to overshadow our base, so we'll, we'll get into that a bit more. Hi Austin, how are you? I'm just starting. <laughs> how are you? How's your day today? This one is probably halfway, I'm going to say. <laughs> Not quite the same process as yours with the beautiful left to right, but we're, we're gradually blocked her in. I've just got a few areas here that definitely need to be filled in. So that's what we're going to start with for sure. How are you? How's painting? How's your autumn piece going? For anyone who doesn't know, Austin is an amazing YouTube artist and does these beautiful human landscape giants. Um, I'm not describing it very well. Um, check out Austin Howlett's uh, YouTube channel. Seriously, it is beautiful. Hey Dee, how you doing? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you. This one is definitely sort of a punch in the face of like opposite warms and cools. And I kind of love that. Just having a lot of orange and teal going on at the same time. Um, it's sort of contrast to the extreme, which I do like. Um, yeah. I don't know. I probably need to calm it down a little bit, to be honest, but I'm happy so far. So I'm not going to fight my happiness. All right, let me just find a brush that isn't unhappy with me. One sec. Okay. I found a couple. <laughs> I really need to have like a proper brush washing afternoon because that's what I sort of oil my brushes in between sessions and then once a week I'm meant to have a big brush washing session with the proper brush soap but 
Have I done that in the last two weeks? No, I have not. All right, let's get into this a little bit. I'm going to start just filling in the hair section. She's got this beautiful sort of golden blonde hair. Well, it does have a lot of dark in it as well, so I'm just going to fill it in with a light belly first. Oh, that's okay, Dee, no worries. I love a mad look. Good luck with your assignment. Gosh, they come up so fast. My hair's actually going to come up to about here, which will... <laughs> oh, excuse me. God, I really am having a war with my body at the moment. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, I'm so glad I switched palettes. This one has so much more mixing area. My other palette just is covered. It needs some TLC. A bit too blue. Austin, what's it like over your way at the moment? We're just sort of getting into spring over here, which is really nice, but at the same time, I can never predict if it's going to be cold, wet, or boiling. <laughs> I had a jacket on until just before the stream, and I'm like, no, it's too warm for this. Australia is weird like that. Especially Melbourne. <laughs> That's okay. Um, just adding a little bit of warmth to this hair back here. Because as much as the hair either side of the arm is doing very, very different things, I still want them to have a relationship. So, I want to completely have them be aliens to each other. Even though that's how it is in the reference. One of those common artist decides different to the reference things. I might actually get my mile stick as well, just because my arm is achy. Can't you support them? Let's be sportive today. I just want to quickly do some measuring for this forehead because the forehead's feeling a bit big. Yeah, it needs to come down to about here. Block in some skin and then we can come back with some more detail. Awesome. So just bringing the skin over to this other line that I placed last session because everything was a bit too far to the right. I like when I can see those notes that I left in the last session and you just leave yourself little hints about where you want to go. Yeah, see that already feels so much better. actually not include one yellow on my palette and I think I'm already missing it. It was the really vibrant permanent lemon. So I might need to grab that as well. Sorry I feel a bit starting this session. I think it's because I haven't been working on this peak lately like it's sort of been what has it been a two-week break? That's a bit long usually for me when working on 
couple pieces at a time, but at the moment I'm just listening to my body. Oh, Austin, I don't know if you know, I'm, um, I'm three months pregnant. <laughs> that was my exciting news over on my Discord. I haven't put it up on YouTube sort of publicly publicly. I might wait until a little bit later, but yeah, that's why I keep complaining about my body. <laughs> it's sort of doing a lot of things while growing a baby. So happy news. We're very excited. So yes, if I whinge about my body, I apologize. <laughs> that's why. Oh, okay. Yeah, see that yellow is so much brighter. Might zoom you guys in while we're working on the face, actually. Let's zoom in a little. There we go. Lovely. Just going to very quickly realize that I didn't promote the stream at all. <laughs> hold, hold for five. Does anyone need to go get a beverage? Go get a beverage. <laughs> I didn't go get a beverage after this either. Oh, it's all happening. Yeah, that please. I need to figure out how to make it sort of automatically share when I start streaming. I know that that's a thing. It does it to my Twitter. My Twitter, it sort of automatically shares. Almost done, almost done. Uh, where am I? Facebook. There's too many places. How many social media accounts do you have? Because seriously, I have probably in excess of six and I use three of them all the time. There we go. Thank you so much for your patience. Sorry. I'm just frazzled today. We were meant to start at 9.30 and I thought the sleep in would give me more mental faculties and it hasn't. <laughs> oh well. <sighs> Making sure everything is visible. There we go. Give me one sec. I needed. So much brighter. That's much better. I'm just using a little filbert brush at the moment because I want everything to be nice and soft. I need to fix the tip of that nose. That is way too bright. <laughs> You know when you see something with fresh eyes and then you're just like, whoa, that is way off. That's what that noise is to me. <laughs> That's okay. What we're here to do today is to find all the little bits and get them all going. just way too bright because the bright point is just above the button of the nose. Shadow here. But let's keep filling in. Let's get I don't want to see any more white. <laughs>
I like this full hand. Lock that at all. Oh no. Yeah. It's amazing how many subtle little changes, especially in a face. They can be the tiniest little things, but they can completely change how the face looks and how the face reads and how likeness is perceived. Likeness is such a tricky one. I feel like likeness is something I always aim for, but it's not something that's important to me per se. Like, especially when I'm using a model who I don't know. In this case, I am. I'm using a model from a stock reference site because um, we're still in lockdown here in Melbourne so getting reference photography is pretty impossible. Um, likeness is just one of those challenges that if you get it, you get it. I still think there's an element of luck to it which I shouldn't believe because painting as a technical skill is a learned skill <laughs> but likeness is just one of, I think it's that uncanny valley thing where it's like if it's too human it hits a different chord and if you get likeness right sometimes it's just that little bit more human and when it hits it hits and you can feel it and you can I don't know the painting just breathes a little bit more of that but it's not something I know specifically how to do other than just trying to be accurate and trying to be you know balanced between the reference and my aims as an artist and my aims in the piece I don't know there's no direct formula, you know, like paint this way or paint mathematically correct to this degree and you will get a likeness. Because I think some hyper-realist painters sometimes miss out on the likeness, even though they spend so much time meticulously copying, you know, the minutest details. Somehow it can still not get that magic, which sucks. Not something I get all the time, but when I do get it... Makes my heart sing. Oh, that was a bit warm, but that's okay. We can come. This would block me in the skin now. My face looks very, very red on the screen. <laughs> Let me just see. What's the intensity of my camera? Ah, that's just how she is. Anyway. It's interesting painting in natural light because I think I've done most of this painting in artificial light because I paint more at night. So today it's like, I don't know, I'm definitely seeing things that I wouldn't see if I was still painting under the lamp. And that's probably good because the hard part about lighting as much as some people are like, you must be in natural light at all times. It's like when someone is viewing the painting, you can't predict what light it's going to be under. So I feel like paintings need to work under multiple lighting conditions. They need to work under natural light. They need to work under artificial light. They need to work under spotlight because, you know, in best, best circumstances, you know, people can spotlight their work or in a gallery it would be spotlit. I love spotlighting. If I could have track lighting all the way through my house. Oh my God. Dreams. Things you don't need, but things that would just be so beautiful. Yeah, that ear needed to get a lot darker. Happy! Alright, what else have we got? When I said earlier I had a new medium for today, it's the same medium. I'm still using the solvent-free fluid for, by Gamblin. I'll admit I'm still not 100% in love with it, but because it is such a different medium, I don't feel confident switching medium halfway through the painting. I think it would mess with my fat baleen, so I'm just gonna keep with it. But I think I've decided, um, oh does everyone here know about Oiltober? 
Oiltober is coming up. It is the October One Oil Painting a Day Challenge, as started by Lena Danya, another amazing YouTube artist, uh, back in 2019, 2020? No, 2019, I think. Um, yeah, and rather than me use a prompt list or things like that, I decided last year to ask my followers to come up with the prompts for me. So suggesting the prompts in my Instagram, Facebook and Discord and YouTube, um, I have received, I only opened suggestions yesterday and oh my god have I received some really cool suggestions. I'm really excited. There's so many I already want to paint and I'm just like, ah, it's whatever I pull out of the hat that day. So we will see. We will see. Um, but I am very excited. It's, it's, it's coming up so fast now. My paper is in transit in the post at the moment. I got some beautiful handmade dodgy paper again um, by Dodgy Roger here in Melbourne, who hand makes his paper from art print offcuts, which is the beautiful 100% cotton rag paper and various other papers that he picks up along the way. And this year we've done a really sort of black to white ombre collection that has these beautiful, almost like tie-dye looking speckles throughout. Um, I don't know, it turned out really, really cool. I just sort of described it as, can you just like make a tonal set for me, but like make it cool. <laughs> And yeah, Dodgy Roger did an amazing job. He's actually also on Twitch. Did I create a command for him? Oh, hi Yik. No, it was meant to be this morning, um, but I was not feeling super crashed this morning. So I delayed it until 12, because we did a night session last week, I think. Yeah, we did, because we did a sketch session, so next week it will be in the evening. And I'm sorry for the mix-up. <laughs> nope, I don't think that command works. Where's my commands? That's okay. Um, but yeah, how are you, Yik? How are you doing? <laughs> We're just trying to fill in all the white areas on this painting so far today. Then once I get all of that filled in, then we're going to get into the face and the arms and just get everything working together happily. That's the goal. So yeah, little bits of progress already made. Fixed up the forehead, fixed up the hair. So that all feels good. Uh, moving tools. Nope. Other. Doing a bit of D and D planning. Oh, that's nice. D and D planning is great. I haven't made a command for dodgy paper. Okay, I'll have to do that. I'll write myself a note. D. But you can check out dodgy paper on Twitch and and see him make paper live, or drawings, or lots of cool things. So oh, that's all cool. <laughs> now Jack's been doing some D&D planning as well. I'm very excited. We're going to be doing a little one-shot campaign for his birthday with family. That should be very, very fun. I'm very excited for my character. I'm playing a dwarf barbarian for the first time. I get to be a big, buff, burly, short guy. <laughs> Which should be fun. I was looking up pictures of dwarf barbarians just to find like a profile picture I could use and I'm like this race is allergic to shirts every single dwarf barbarian has his shirt off and his chest out but like wearing various armor and other things so I think that is now officially part of my character is that he's allergic to shirts if people try and dress him oh no that is not on Remember this song, this is a cool saxophone one. Love a cool saxophone.
let's try and finish the eye on the left first and then keep going because I'm jumping around a little bit too much. Too impatient. <laughs> nice shadows in the hollow next to the eye because she's got a bit of shadow coming in on this side which is what I'm gonna to have to reflect in these clouds that sort of light coming from this direction the clouds I'm never fussed on them being 100% realistic because they are sort of I sort of use them as symbols for the internal what's happening inside her head is represented by the clouds and how they interact with her body but I still want them to look convincing enough and that's what this cloud at the moment is way too bright for going around her arm where all the shadow is so I need that much shadow to be on the cloud as well so it looks like it's actually 3D coming around so that will be in the next bit after we're done with the face and the skin is very very tiny but it's sort of doing what I want it to do so I'm persevering. I almost want it to be just like a one size bigger. I'm too lazy to go hunting for one. I have that many brushes in here. I need to sit down and organize it all. As much as I don't like moving house every year there is a good thing in that you go through all your stuff and you reorganize everything and it's like a big reset. I feel like I almost need to do that already. But when I do need to do that, it does prove that I've been productive because I've made a mess in my studio doing all the things I've been doing. So at least it legitimizes that I've been productive. <laughs> Which you need to convince yourself that you've been productive sometimes. Too easy to get stuck. Gradually there's an eye coming in, just a nice socket. Let's figure out the other one. shape better. Good. Brush her blue on it too. And again. Much better. Alright, now 
now I've run away from what I said I was doing, but I will come back. <laughs> what I find I keep doing on streams, as I say, I'll do one thing with my mouth and then my hand is like, no, 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 no. I'm going over here. barely painted. This is so annoying. It's aggravating. Hmm. What I might do is I'm just going to put the easel slightly lower. Bear with me for a sec. Oop. Let's see if that helps my arm because then I don't need to raise my arm as high. I feel like I'm fighting my body today. It's annoying. <laughs> See how already bringing that bit of shadow in under the cloud? That makes the cloud look like it's going over. That's that's what I needed to do. Such a little thing, but it's just those basics. When you're introducing fantasy elements in with real elements, you've got to think about light and you've got to think about relationships and all that kind of stuff. And like in my little, so basically for this one, what I did was I took the reference photo of the model and I sort of smushed a cloud photo that I had in Photoshop very, very roughly over the top of her, but I didn't sit there and render it properly because it's just a reference. I didn't want to spend the time painting clouds in the right place and painting shadows when I could be spending that time painting. So because I didn't do that in my prep, I've now got to make sure I'm on it while I'm doing the paint. Yeah, if you forget things like that, they can become a bit glaring after the fact. <laughs> what is one kind of style or type of art you are unlikely to ever try just because it's too logistically difficult or too far out of my wheelhouse? Um, I'm definitely intimidated by certain kinds of printmaking, so like lithography and things like that, where you have to carve the image into a substrate like stone or um, things like that, and if you carve one line wrong, you can't put it back. <laughs> so that's sort of... I think there is a version like copper etching where they put wax on the top and you carve into the wax, and if you don't like it, you can put the wax back, but yeah, it's it's... Printmaking has the same issues as watercolour for me, which I do do watercolours occasionally, especially if I'm out on the road or travelling, where it's a process of no going back. And I like going back and forth. That's why oils work so well for me, because they're forgiving. They're incredibly forgiving. You can sort of go back and forth all day long. You can even sand back the substrate and, you know, start again from scratch if you want to. There's no you can't fix it or you can't keep messing with it really to a degree like there's there's certain extremes um but most of the time it's a very forgiving medium um and that allows freedom and for me the more free the art supply the more likely i want to try it hey Millie, how are you how's things <laughs> um yeah i was just talking about sort of art styles I haven't tried or I'm less likely to try. I'm trying to think of other ones. I do really like sculpture as much as that seems very strange, um, but sculpture like clay and that where again it's not sort of a one-way street. I'd love to try porcelain. Porcelain's so delicate and so tricky but I don't know I love how porcelain looks. Um, 
and how thin you can get it and things like that and how smooth it looks. I don't know. Porcelain is one of those really challenging ones, but I'm like, maybe when I'm like old and retired and I don't know, something like that. I don't really think uh, most artists retire, so I don't know if that's quite the road for me, but we'll see. Sorry folks, I'm getting carried away with this cloud now. But it's doing the thing. Just a little bit of shadow. And it's now looking oh, 3D. What I wanted. I needed to know that was going to work. Feels better already. Yeah. You're getting housework done. Merely a productive bean. <laughs> well done. Thank you. I'm, I'm quite enjoying this piece. I just, I haven't touched it in two weeks since our last time touching it on stream, even though I said on stream, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do this and this and this. I didn't. Um, so I'm hoping today we can get a fair bit into it. But yeah, no, cleaning the house is a great idea. We did a bit of a blitz a few days ago, so I've pretty much the dishes sort of ignored the house for the last three days which has been lovely um there's my hubby's home at the moment which is lovely he's got some leave from work to recover and that's just been nice to have the extra help around the house sometimes you wish your pets would help you with cleaning the house more they really should Dipper should know better the kitty cats should know better <laughs> They're all lazy. Okay, so that's sort of... Without getting too fussy, that's the gist of the cloud now. And that definitely... I feel like that's going over her arm a lot more now, which is lovely. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Alright, back to the eye sections. That's what we said we were doing, right? Right? Smaller brush again. Where'd I put it? There. I don't know. Is there any like art medium that you're too scared by, Yik? Or is it just so much not your wheelhouse? You wouldn't know. Because you know, now's the time to give it a go. Just saying. Create some characters for your D&D campaign. Actually, if I'm thinking about it really literally, the type of art I probably wouldn't do the most is like performance art. Because I'm not an on stage person. This is on stage as I get. <laughs> performance art, maybe dance. Dance is not my thing. We did a, a little dance for our wedding, and that is as far as I will go with that. <laughs> for sure. What other art forms? Singing? No one wants to hear that. Or am I thinking too abstractly now <laughs> about what's an art form? us to come up a bit as well. Hey. Most of them, if not all of them. Writing definitely counts as being artistic. Writing is something like, I can talk about ideas, but I can't articulate them on paper. I think that's why I paint, because I can articulate them visually, given time and preparation, but I can't write. But I love reading when other people have written things and gotten into it. Writing definitely counts. Maybe that's why you're more apprehensive about visual media, because writing is more your thing. Dun 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 dun. 
Have you gotten into it with your latest D&D writing? How's it feeling? That no shape is better. Okay, I'm happy with that. People want a restrictions update. Yes, please. I would love a news update because I can't watch the news while I'm doing stuff. He's giving the presser near some place with old style fire alarm going off. Well, that's convenient. <laughs> Come on, Dan's team. Pick your locations better. Is he wearing North Face? Tell me he's wearing North Face. That's all I want to know. <laughs> no. Vic lockdown is definitely going a bit here, there and everywhere at the moment, so I have been most days, if not watching the updates, sort of sticking on the ABC News blog. Yes, as much as I'm all vaccinated now, yay! It's still hectic. Hectic, hectic. Our state. Suit, no tie. Mmm. Medium. Medium. Fully vaccinated picnics. Max five people from max two households. Not vaccinated. Uh, oh, okay. So, fully vaccinated people. Picnics. Max five people from max two households. That's so nice. Is there a distance requirement? 10 kilometer radius. Oh, I can see my parents. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. When is that starting? We're allowed to do outdoor things. I'm guessing like masks on except when eating, which is absolutely fine, but yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Oh my God, the parks are gonna be so busy this weekend. I'm assuming it'll be on this weekend. Nice update. We like nice updates. Midnight tomorrow night. Oh, sweet. Oh, does that change our weekend plans? No, I'm not sure. We'll have to ask the partner. Jack, look at the meteor update. Because they've just allowed picnics and shit. Um, okay. I've, I've announced the update. <laughs> That's so nice. We're going to be able to get outside. Let me guess, this weekend's meant to rain all weekend. <laughs> Probably. But that is so nice. That means that I can actually plan to see my parents. And my best buddies. A lot of my buddies live within 10 kilometers, which is nice. E. Gotta find some places to have picnics. That will be a thing. Forecast is cold and rain all weekend. I knew it! <laughs> I knew it! Oh, Melbourne, I love you. You weirdo. But that's okay. 
I think the weekend would be the heinous busy time anyway, so hey, maybe we can organise a sneaky weekday catch up with people. If anyone is free on weekdays. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to chat to my friends when not streaming. <laughs> that is a nice update. Sweet no tie. Nice update. Good work, Dan. How is he justifying this despite the fact the numbers are going up? Is it just because our vaccine rate is better? Because I still feel like our numbers are going up, which is scary. Yeah, somewhat based on vax rate. Okay. I still... I'm glad it's 10 kilometers, although I'm sure some people will break that. Hopefully that will keep stemming. No NTR breaky. Face looks weird at the moment because she hasn't got like eyelashes or eyebrows or anything, but it will come together, I promise. <laughs> Press conference is getting some nice background music. I like it. They should put some mood music in, it would help keep people calm. Wouldn't it? one of those psychosomatic things like playing nice music in prisons be nice during like the question time at least that's when they get annoyed at the reporters being rude and stuff Hey look, we've almost gotten rid of all the white! That was our first goal for today! Love hitting goals! White obliterated. The chin is still quite white, but that's actually painted. That's not. 
background. So background eliminated. That's an achievement. She needs to come out actually. Yay, we have a face happening. That's what I meant. The second you sort of fill in all that white, it feels like you've accomplished something. I just have a really bad habit of doing it very slowly or forgetting some areas and leaving them for ages like a non-committal person. This is the other thing I wanted to do, bring some more of those greens into the skin in the cool areas so that way they have a bit more relationship to the clouds. And that'll be something that'll gradually build up as we go but missing a lot of it in this the shadow side of the face. Get in. Thank you guys so much for the update. That's really nice to know that a something is happening. As much as I'm still nervous about the highest case numbers. Something at least is variety in life. Oh, bad mood, Liz. I had blue on my finger. Boo. All right, let's fix that. Just tried to lift a tiny bit. And let us move blue everywhere. Not the end of the world. I really shouldn't use my fingers so much, but sometimes you just want to nudge something and your finger is just a tool that's here. And that's when you make silly mistakes. Dipper. Hey honey. How are you? You just come in to have a sniff around, huh? Hey. What you doing? You gonna let me put you on camera? No, you're gonna walk away. Of course you are. She still looks a bit of a mess, but at least the structure is there. Structure. I think I want to make, move to a bigger brush again. Just so I can get some big blocks of colour in. This brush might seem a bit excessive, but it is a stiff brush, so that means it's only going exactly where I'm asking it to. I'm not like flip-flopping around like my little shader. I wanted some unity in 
this forehead area because it's currently made of so many little decisions it sort of isn't coming together so if this just I hesitate to use the word blending because people may think that means smudge everything out and it doesn't it means just unifying the area some more direct brushwork yeah hey Kristen how are you hello hello How are things today? I didn't do much work on this one when I said I would, so we're, we've filled in all of our white so far that was left behind from the board. Now we're getting some unified planes of the face happening. That's the goal. The goal, that's goal. Just a performance review. Ooh. They reviewed and liked your performance. Oops. Thank you so much. She's coming along. She's coming along. She just needs a lot of like a lot of little stuff. I want to go around all the skin now and just unify all the shapes and make them all chat together happy. And go around all the cloudscapes and make that work in better harmony like this little cloud we added a bit of shadow and things under the arm and it's a lot more convincing now i need to do that with the clouds on the other side of the body um i think i need a velvet this one's giving me too many edges i'm having a bit of a fight with my brushes today that one's too rough let me go get a velvet flat brush I was using is really good for just sort of applying sort of color but it doesn't sort of bring the edges together the way that this one does this one has better edge control for large areas like foreheads being somewhat fussy but that's just because I want this to work Blending it up into the hairline because then we'll bring the hair back down into the skin once the skin is dry. Thank you. 
Alright, I think that's the forehead in. I want to stop messing with it because I'm just going to lose all that colour variation I just added. <laughs> um, but it's getting there. And I'll just add a bit of angle for this background. I said I was getting it on the forehead, but I changed my mind. Ah. Alright, I think we need a little break from the face. Let's work our way up. Oh. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, I'm too dark and... A bit of this stuff. get a bit more structure in that side of the arm and then we'll bring the elbow out to be now. How did the rest of the presser go everyone? All done now? Did the numbers go up today? My only other question. That's fair. Some days you want to avoid the numbers, I'm just curious. But I can check later. After this I'm going to take Dipper for a walk. I think it'll be a nice strolly kind of relaxy walk today. I'm still sore and then I need to remember to do stretches when I get back. I'm not so sore. <laughs> there we go. See how much darker that is now on that part of the arm and how that matches up over here with this bit? 
that's much more unified and much happier. And so on. sometimes you just need that base down first before you can sit here and sort of finesse shadows and play with the relationships across the whole board. You just need the paint down first. <laughs> Now I'm just refining so that the light is coming down the arm, down the face, down the chest. So I don't want my my main points of light to be over here. I want them all to be over here. So I'm just calming this down a little bit. It makes a big difference for that, which is kind of cool. Yeah. mess with this cloud again but I shouldn't until I'm done with the arms. <laughs> Thank you. 
we're making a lot of progress today. I think I'm just starting to hit that point where I'm like, oh, there's still so much more to go. <laughs> That 60 to 80% point, I always struggle with paintings because it's sort of like, it's so close and yet so far. It's feel overwhelming. To sort of see the end but not be there yet and just be like, Ugh. That's usually the point of the painting that gets me down. That's the point of the painting that got me with the other one that I'm doing of the crying girl between two spaces. Although I figured out what was wrong with her, one of her eyes was too low than the other, so at least I know what I need to do now, as opposed to I was sitting there for ages just going, why does this painting not work? Why does this painting not work? I ended up um, taking it into Photoshop and just overlaying a photo of it over the reference just to see if there was anything obvious I was missing, and that was it. It was the eye was sort of like quarter of an inch off. So I'm hoping once I do that, that painting will be complete and finished. To this one where, yeah, I've still got to just work my way around all the parts of the painting. Finessing and finishing. But at least all the structure is there. All the structure is definitely here. Some of the final colours are there. There's a, there's a road. Just that part of the painting that is a process. It's continuing down the road. Let me get my small brush out. Love elbows, they're so weird. They've got so many weird little shapes about them, but they're great. I want sort of yeah, the light to come down here, down the face. I want the elbow to be strong. Like a point of light. All my shadows don't come up high. part about all those is there isn't a lot of sharp edges sitting here going oh yes and then this cuts in here but it doesn't really cut in here it just sort of forms in 
everything is soft. Mm. Oh. There we go, but I think I might pike at about two o'clock. My arm is hurting. Stupid body. Weird. You can look at an arm like this and go, oh yeah, it's just a straight line. And there's so many little transitions of colour. And it's like a constant battle between keeping it unified and like dividing it into all the different sections. <laughs> just keep adding a bit and then blending it, unifying it, and get it to play nice. Adding another bit and then trying to get that to play nice and then going back and forth but because this arm's like right in the middle and right at the front it's got to be right it's just got to be I can't half ass it I need a different brush to cut in. This is it, I want a nice sharp line. Do the face. But then I need to quickly bring it in with the rest of the arm skin. Complicated. using the straight 
flat edge to get all the color over to the edge. And then I'll come back with my little bit. Ooh, I need a dry brush. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta run over the edge with a dry brush. I my cable on the stick. And it just helps when you've got multiple areas of wet paint next to each other to let them do what they need to do and not look so janky. Oh, that's a terrible way of describing that. Uh, I'm losing my words. I'm sorry, folks. I think it's like when you put two bits of paint next to each other. It's almost like they've got a gap in between that's like left because you don't want them to touch, but you sort of need them to touch in order to belong together. Does that make sense? So the dry brush sort of marries them. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Helps them coexist. Yeah, you can see in some people's paintings where they've painted different sections at different times and it's sort of obvious because all the sections don't marry together into one surface. They're all maintaining that separateness. Um, I don't know. It, 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 often it doesn't affect the picture quality, it's just something I notice because I'm a painter. Probably. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm quite happy with that. Keep going down the arm so it's all the same. I feel like we should be a little shadowy. Alright, we got a lot of wet paint there in wet paint, so I don't want to mess with that too much. But I'm feeling pretty good about the arm structure. Let's just get in and finish the elbow.
feel like I'm barely putting any pressure on the board now because it's all wet paint on wet paint. I'm just like ever so lightly dusting a new colour into an existing colour. say this music even though it's the same music it has sort of a different mood when I'm painting during the day compared to at night I don't know if you guys think that but it's definitely I don't know very uplifting at the moment during the day it's nice Hopeful. some of those. I don't want to do like every line of the cracks of the elbows but I want to just sort of hint at them. Sometimes I just sort of plonk a whole lot in and then go over it with the dry brush and it just sort of calms them down. fussing with that transition from the dark to the light it goes through about three different points and trying to get all three points looking unified is the hard part right now it's kind of there i'm happy with it i'm happy with how the arm looks particularly the face needs a lot of work as we already know but at least it's blocked in now I might leave that shine on the elbow for now because I like it and we'll go from there. Alright, let's get this other arm being as happy as that one, as that would be nice. Plus I've got all the nice arm colours here so just Good. 
Come back to the big brush. Blocking in. And the reference this arm is a lot brighter because it's closer to the light source, but I think I want to calm it down a little bit. So I'll allow it to be bright here where it's coming in towards the face, and then I might calm it down a bit here towards the outside so it doesn't draw attention to itself. Have you had a look over the suggestions I've gotten for oil turbo so far? Yes, I have, Yik. There's some amazing ones. Oh, sorry, I missed that. It feels like it would suit like a space-like piece, like a nebula or one of your cloudscapes. Absolutely. I haven't done many like nebulary nighttime space ones, but normal cloudscapes, yeah. Fantasy cloudscapes, I guess I call them, or the real cloudscapes, because they're not exactly realistic. But that's the idea. But um, yeah, no, oil turbo. So yesterday I announced that submissions were open for oil turbo. So I'm getting my paper and now you can all submit your suggestions under the post that has oil turbo in the image, um, the word and on Instagram. And some of the suggestions, oh my God, there's so many I want to paint. <laughs> There's one that was like potion or poison or something like that. And I'm like, oh, that would be really cool. Um, oh, I can't remember many off the top of my head, which is probably a good thing. Because that's a problem. Now I'm like halfway between, do I like plan for what I would do if I got that prompt? Or no, do I just leave it as like baseline? I think once I get my paper, we're going to have a stream where I prime all my paper and we can talk about Oiltober and plan a bit. I do like normally going through like the stock photo websites and just collecting anything that looks cool just so I have like a baseline collection of inspiration. <laughs> oh Nebula comment was about the music. Oh that makes sense. It is a bit that because it's just sort of like slowly moving from one mood to another and I guess in space it's like everything's so big it feels kind sort of like slow but mystical and fun. That makes more sense. Sorry I missed that one. Um, but yeah, no, there's been some cracker suggestions already, but that shouldn't stop anyone from going and making their own suggestions. There's even just been some cute ones, like an Airedale Terrier puppy, and I'm like, oh, I wonder why people suggested that. Um, or things like that, which are just fun. So I think it'll be a good mix. It'll be, I definitely think this year I've already received probably 40 or 50 suggestions, so we're not going to get through them all. Um, last year I think I got 50, so yeah, that was sort of like 50 total. I got through, what, two thirds, a bit more, of what was suggested. Um, I did hesitate at the end of the challenge last year, I sort of wanted to go through the bucket and see what didn't get picked, but I'm like, no, that would be a bad idea, because then I would be living in regrets. <laughs> So I didn't end up going through the bucket, but yeah, no, I'm ha I'm quite happy to look at all the suggestions before. Well, I'm going to have to sit there and print them and cut them out anyway, so I might as well look at them all as they come through. Um, I guess if anyone suggested something super inappropriate, I would get rid of it before it's even a suggestion, but my audience is too nice for that and no one has done any stupid things like that. One person did suggest pandemic, which I was sort of like... Oh god, what would I do for that? But I don't know, that's part of the challenge. That's part of the challenge. I don't know whether that's a good suggestion or a bad suggestion. It's just one that made me go, Ugh! I don't know. Ugh. It made my skin prick. Prickle. Prickle? Bristle. That kind of thing. But yeah. That's sort of my experience with it so far, but... I am absolutely itching to get started. My paper is in the post at the moment and I want it to be here. I paid for express post and I'm just like, please get here reliably. If it gets here like one day before October, it's only going from Melbourne to my house, so it's not going far, but the post system is a bit special at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, if it gets here like just before October, I'll be stressing to get it all primed in time. I suppose if I had to, I could just prime the piece of paper for the next day, but I'd, I'd prefer it to all be 
prepared. So it's all ready to go. Because yeah, I'm hoping to film it all like I normally do for YouTube. Do some more Instagram reels and TikToks this year. Although TikToks, like, I haven't figured out TikTok very well. I've only got a couple of things on there. I had a few more, but I didn't like them, so I got rid of them. Um, yeah. TikTok, I think, is just too fast-paced for me. Like, spend time with stuff. That's why I like YouTube. This is a spend time kind of place. And have conversations back and forth. I feel like TikTok comments don't have the same conversation. Or maybe it's just because, yeah, again, I haven't engaged with it very much, so it might just be my experience. Right, I just need a bit of medium so I can make this line a bit sharper to the edge of the arm. Okay. Took you two weeks to get a package from Two Stub Observer? Oh god! I know, and that's why, like, I'm paying the extra for Express when it's things like this that I like need by a date because I'm just like I don't rely I can't rely on normal stuff. Hey Lurch! How are you? We're just talking about how the postal system is a fucked. <laughs> um yeah no I, I'm everything through my work I work for an art supply store we're sending express at the moment because we just don't have any faith in normal post and like some things have only we have one thing going to Queensland at the moment and the person rang us up and asked where it was and it had only gone from Bayswater to Dandenong in about a week and a half, which is just ridiculous. So, I don't know. It's just crazy. Yep, it's not great. But I want my paper for Oil Toba because I want to do my 31 paintings in 31 days. It is the goal. <laughs> How's your day, Latch? What are you up to today? We're painting arms over here. It's an arm kind of day. Alright, so now that I've got that top arm looking alright, I need to figure out underneath, because we've had this cloud come over. I might even darken it more. TV working on some string stuff absolutely gotta help lemon absolutely that's a nice day it's a nice chill day i gotta walk the dog after this and probably have some lunch because i had breakfast at 12 <laughs> just before 12. <sighs> who said time had to make sense when we're in lockdown although yes we can all plan picnics now which is exciting Last year in Melbourne, aren't you? Did you see the announcement this morning? There was an update. Which is... Speak for yeah, yeah, we can do picnics with rules and regulations, but picnics that was the nice update today. In my head, I'm just like, where would be a place where I could have a nice picnic where there won't be a billion people? <laughs> Some of the walking trails around here have absolutely gone nuts. There's so many people. I've been just walking around suburbs a bit more with the dog rather than actual walking trails. You know, it's a little win. It counts. 
I think this model has fake tan and that's what's throwing me is that under her arm it's quite dark orange. I'm just gonna calm it down and make it match the other arm a bit more. <laughs> yes. Ain't that the truth indeed. Ah, oh, I thought I should update everyone as well. I mentioned it in the Discord, but um we've got our little Kofi goal at the moment, which is over here on my Kofi where you can donate if you would like, or can do, or anything like that. Um, so rather than caffeine at the moment, we're saving up for stream upgrade of a new camera so I can actually have this be much more high resolution. You guys can see the brush strokes and see the paint properly. Um, so I, after long discussions with a friend of mine who's a photographer and absolutely amazing, um, the camera I was looking at that I'd budgeted for is no longer supported by Canon. <laughs> So that was a bit of a signing myself up for a dead end, I think, in terms of one that wouldn't be supported going forward. So we've changed the plan, switched to Sony, found a camera that looks like it's designed exactly for what I want, which is streaming and taking stills and video. So I want the triple threat. Um, yeah, but unfortunately that has meant I've had to add to the budget because being a newer camera, which is supported by Sony, which is up to date with all the nice camera webcam utility and all that sort of thing. It is more expensive, which is poo. No, I'm looking at the, let me double check. Not the A6000, it is the ZV-E10. I'm gonna type that because I'm gonna forget it. ZV-E10. Um, and the main reason I'm looking at that one is because it has interchangeable lenses, like a DSLR, but because I've never had a DSLR before, this one's actually allowing me to learn a lot more about light control and things like that, but also have a lot of automatic functions, which would be great if I'm, you know, taking some YouTube footage out and about. Um, it's got a good microphone setup and you can sort of add a microphone or add extra to it. Um, it's got a lot of really nice controls built in for YouTube video making and things like that. Hey Ian! You heard me talking about cameras, didn't you? <laughs> Bard the Yard suggested that one. Ooh, that's good. That's good to know. Because yeah, most, most streamers I know use Canons, but I think a lot of cases they're older Canons. One, because they're cameras people may have already had. Or two, they're cameras people don't use for camera ring anymore. They just use as webcams. Um, yeah. There you go. Well now Mr. Snap Happy Ian there, he's the one who recommended me this one and yeah I'm pretty sold on it now. It looks like it does not only everything I want but it looks like it'll be a good investment for me for the next, you know, five plus years. I want something that'll last and I won't want to replace it straight away or anything like that because I already like my little Panasonic Lumix which is what I use for my YouTube videos. I had someone review my channel and they're like, oh, so you must be using a mobile phone to film. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> you rude, rude. Like he was really nice about it, but I was still just like, yeah, the quality of the paint is and is a, you can't see it all the time, especially, yeah. I don't know. It's a great little camera. I still love my little Panasonic and I will probably use that still anytime I'm filming somewhere a bit more hazardous. Um, like I filmed in the snow once I painted while sitting in the snow. <laughs> That was really fun. I would not take the new Sony there. Yep. As much as it would take beautiful footage of the snow, and I'm sure it would, would not want to jeopardize new camera um, when I get it, which I haven't got it yet, but yes, we're saving up and watching out for sales. So the budget on Kofi is the maximum budget. And we are at, what are we at? What are we at? What are we at? What are we at? We are at... How do I not load every single tab possible before I start streaming? We are at 43% of the goal currently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is exciting, but when it was the old budget, it was like at 60%. So it feels like a step down, but I don't know. It's worth it. All the changes are worth it. And all contributions from artworks I'm selling at the moment are going towards it. And I've got two artworks that are currently being paid off on a lay-by arrangement. So that means they're gradually adding to the goal, which is lovely. 
I'm very thankful to those buyers who are picking up some beautiful artworks for their home. And yeah, um, now we've got our Oil Topper painting challenge coming up, which is going to be a huge thing every single day of October, doing a small oil painting, all for sale on the 1st of November. So that's a whole other thing that if we haven't reached our goal by then, hopefully that will contribute, because I think last year a lot of people picked up a nice little artwork for themselves in the Oil Toba um, event, which was lovely, and they are more affordable artworks, because I do all the Oil Toba artworks on handmade A5 paper. Um, all the artworks sort of are around the $100 to $200 mark. I do have something special in store, which I haven't announced yet, so... You will have to keep an eye out for that because I'm not just doing the normal rectangles like I normally do, and that's all I'm going to say. Ah! Oh, that's the other thing, Latch. So for my painting challenge, Oil Toba, where I paint one painting a day um, for all of October, it's my followers who get to pick the prompts. So you get to send me little ideas on Instagram at the moment under my Oil Toba post, and if I pull it out of the hat, I've got to paint it. So if you want to chuck anything in as a suggestion, you are more than welcome to. Just head over to my Instagram, at Liz Gridley Artist. I don't have an alert for that, so never mind. Um, and go to the Oil Toba post and you can put in suggestions. And you can see a whole lot of suggestions other people have done. So that's kind of cool. This is something I only do once a year. So the rest of the year I work on bigger paintings. And then once a year I work on small works. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be doing it again because I don't know if I'll be able to do it next year when little bub comes along but for now well bub is contained ah. um, it's much easier to do these sort of things so yeah I'm excited also yeah my live stream schedule might be a bit more timey-wimey in October because I figure I'll just live stream whenever I'm painting at my desk doing the oil over as long as I feel like it so I'll, I'll do my normal live stream times but then I'll also do randomized ones um, but I'll talk more about that later I'll figure out how that's gonna work yeah oh Kristen yes in the discord I announced um I'm three months pregnant so that's exciting <laughs> I'm due next year in March, so this is our, our first, and it's very new and very exciting. Um, yeah, that's our big news. So I only sort of announced that last week, so it's all fresh at the moment, but that's something to keep in mind for next year for my painting plans. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's very, very exciting. I, I haven't had too bad of a run of it so far, so I'm... I'm relieved and happy about that. Um, nauseous, yes. Vomity, no. So that's... I feel very lucky. <laughs> it has slowed down my painting a bit though, because like this morning I just woke up so achy and sore. That's why I delayed the stream starting. Because oh, I felt not great. But I'm feeling better now actually. Even my muscles aren't as sore now. I don't know whether that's me just deluding myself or what, but we've gotten a fair amount of painting done today, so I'm happy about that. Hey. Oh, thank you, Georgini. How are you, Georgia? Oh, it's definitely a bit newsy, isn't it? <laughs> I forget who I've told and who I haven't told, because I didn't want to put it out as like a public YouTube video, because I just want sort of the the people who know me, you know, um, I don't know, putting it out as a public YouTube video is a bit weird because it feels like I'm like trying to advertise it to the outside world like I do with my paintings and that's not quite the, the feeling. Um, right, I'm just going to move, zoom out a bit. Oh, wrong way. Oh, wrong way. I'm really happy with that arm at the front. Oh, this is what I need to actually tilt the tripod. Apologies. There we go. 
about that. Yeah, that front arm is much more convincing now. And the back arm's pretty good. I think I still want to fluff out this cloud a bit, but I'll wait till the paint's dry on the arm before I do that. So now I'm just working my way down into the chest. Re-establishing those shadows and getting the skin to be all from the same color palette sort of thing. This side is interesting because we've got a sharp line and then I need it to be a soft line when it hits the cloud forms. Okay. Oh, this is where I need my other reference photo that doesn't have the cloud so I know what's going on underneath the cloud. One sec. That one. That's a problem. If I don't know what's going underneath this form, it's hard to paint it. And I don't like making it up when it comes to anatomy. I prefer to have a reference because then everything looks like it belongs. I know this looks really, really dark, but it will lighten up as I get across everything else. Again, we were talking earlier how we want our main light source to come from here, down the face, and then down again. I still don't want down here to be as bright as the face. I want the face to be the point of interest with these clouds. So we're creating a nice, like, S shape. Just so here I can sort of fluff out where those interruptions to the clouds are. Oh, thank you, Latch. <laughs> We're not quite there yet, but we'll get there. Because this is only, what, my fourth session on this painting, so I reckon it's probably a six session piece. And the next session after this will probably be either doing details in the face or just unifying the clouds around the bits where it interacts with the body, and then the other one will be details. So there's sort of the two stages left in the painting. Which is good because I need to send a photo to this one's in a show at Off the Curb Gallery, which will be going live the second lockdown is lifted. <laughs> um, because we've changed the dates twice and we've just given up on changing the dates until lockdown is lifted now. And then, yeah, there's one other piece I need to quickly finish. But that, and then they'll be on show in Collingwood, Victoria which would be lovely. Two of the pieces in that show are already in the online catalogue, so if you go to the Off The Curb website and look at future exhibitions, you can see Human Condition is the name of the show. Um, it's me and two other artists all doing artworks about people. People and emotions and how we're handling things at the moment a bit. Which is an interesting subject, for sure. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that show actually happening. The other one is I'm a finalist in the Still Life Art Prize at Tacit Galleries in Collingwood. So that one is currently slated for December, so they pushed it way forward and hopefully that will be a good time estimation of when we'll be allowed to be out and about again and when things are safe to go to art openings and such. I 
that one I've got two pieces in. I've got a still life of Mark Hamill's face and I've got a still life of a skull. So I sort of played with the idea of portraiture as still life and the idea of preserving life through these like 3D analogues of humans. Um, and the cast of Mark Hamill's face, I've actually, I bought it off eBay years ago and it's really cool. And I've always intended to paint it, and this show was me going, oh, that's what I should paint. Okay, okay, so that gave me the excuse to do my still life from life um, on Mark Hamill's face. So yeah, I didn't take a photo of that one, I just set it up in front of me and I painted it from life. So that was quite fun. It'll be nice for that show to happen. They've actually uploaded all the, all the people on their website, so I can actually show you the show. Give me one sec. That one. There you go, so that's the tacit collection of Still Life, and I think that's the page that my two weeks my two works are on. Um, so they're technically all available for pre-sale now. It's just the fact that they haven't actually been allowed to be in the show yet. So we will get there. They will be allowed on the show to show at some point, <laughs> which would be nice. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I'm hitting the point where I need lunch. <laughs> well, we've gotten through a lot today, so thank you all so much for joining me. This is I know it was a bit of a weird thing with the time change and everything today, but I am very thankful that you still came to hang out and have a good lurky lurk and have some chill music to set your day to. Definitely always enjoy your company and your questions. Um, so thank you so much. And I think I am going to finish playing with this cloud. Have a log off and have some lunch, maybe go for a walk, and then come back and do some more, was my goal. Because yeah, we, we've made a lot of progress today, I just want to continue this skin going down, and then yeah, we can even put some more light into it once it's dry, but we're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> so thank you all so much for hanging out today, and yeah, thank you as always for your feedback and things like that. I know I've got a lot to talk about at the moment because Oiltober is coming and all these exhibitions are on hold, but yeah, it, it means a lot that you guys come and, and hang out for some chill studio times. Yay! So next week I will be streaming on Thursday evening, so 8pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I might actually schedule the stream now, so that way it's sitting around- No, actually I won't, I'll schedule it next week, but I'll, I'll definitely schedule it a bit earlier so you all know it's coming. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Yeah, well, I hope everyone gets some positive news today. That's been my day so far. But I love you lots, and you have a great day. Bye!